Would you stand with me as we worship? I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah my weapon is I raise a hallelujah, oh, heaven comes to fight for me, I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar, up from the ashes. Hope will arise, death is defeated, the king is alive. I raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. I raise a hallelujah, oh, I will watch the darkness flee. I raise a hallelujah, in the middle of the mystery. I raise a hallelujah. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder, heaven come to fight for me. Sing a little louder, I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the King. offering this morning. Amen. <clears throat> Happy, New Year. Happy New Year. I trust that you've had a great year so far. <laughs> it's only a few hours old and you've only been up a short time. So I trust that it's been a great year. Thank you for being here today. I look forward to a great time of worship together with you and I'm just praising the Lord for the opportunity of a new year, a new opportunity to serve him and praise him. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask John Outlaw, if you would, to open us in prayer today. Please, John. Amen. Before you sit down, 
Take the opportunity to greet five people this morning you haven't spoken to. Would you do that? Go right now. He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted forever, exalted, and I will praise His name. He is the Lord, forever His truth shall reign.
Do you believe that today? We're standing on holy ground because we're standing in his presence. We're going to sing this chorus again. If there's a need you want us to be in prayer with you about, you come sit on the front row. You come kneel at the altar. We'll pray for you this day. Sing with me, would you? We are standing on holy ground. We can know that there are angels there all around. And let us pray. Gather around these that are up here. Would you right now? Come on, make your way. Don't hesitate. Just come and pray for these. And you intercede for them right now, right where they are. Pray that God would do a work in their life. Would you do that? The rest of you can be seated right where you are. That's your prayer spot this morning. So you begin praying right now for the needs of all these folks that are up here. Lord, thank you for the blessing of a, of a new year, a new start, a new opportunity. Thank you that we can come afresh and anew before you this day. And we can ask for your guidance, your leadership, even your healing in each of these situations. And we can thank you in advance for hearing us. Lord, we believe. Just help our unbelief when we seek to stray away from what we know the truth to be, what we know our faith would lead us to be. Father, forgive us of that and get us back on the right track. We pray this morning for each person who has come. We pray for their needs. We pray for your touch on their lives this day. We also pray for uh, the opportunity we have to hear your word shared with us today. Lord, may it be sharper than any two-edged sword, and it speak into our very, very being, Lord, what you want us to hear and then how you want us to respond to your call. Every person here, Lord, in this place, whether they're in the building or they're watching by way of live stream, Father, I just pray for a touch on these lives today. Everybody. Father, when we leave this place, we can honestly say, boy, it's been good to be in your house today. We sensed your presence. We sensed your leadership. We knew you were here. We knew you were speaking. And, Lord, we want to carry your message with us wherever we go. And, Lord, this week we received good news. Right now I pray for next Sunday. I pray that you would be with the Smith family and you would be with us as a church. We want your will to be accomplished. And Father, we thank you in advance for all you're going to do. It's in your hands. And Lord, we want to praise you and thank you for all you're going to do. Now, Father, continue to be with us and may you be honored and glorified. In Jesus' precious name. And all God's children said amen. 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 I don't know if you've made any New Year's resolutions. I, I've made them. I've never kept them. I, I, I mean, we're, we're all alike. Now, there, there may be some that you say, no, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, and you've kept it. But by and large, many times we, we make those resolutions, and somewhere down the road, we go away from that resolution. May we today make a commitment that we'll live every day for Jesus in 2023. I don't know what that means in your life. I'm not sure I know what it means in my life. But may we make that commitment today to live every day of 2023 
for him. We're going to sing a grand old hymn. It's in a little different arrangement form, but nevertheless, I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus, the Nazarene. I need you to stand to sing it, would you? Three, four. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. children said amen. amen amen you may be seated as you're being seated we're going to have a prayer and we're going to take our morning offering and we're going to thank the Lord for what he's going to do with what we're going to give to him so pray with me if you would father uh, this is yours may we give from a heart of love and may you use it and bless your kingdom's work in Jesus name Amen. We 
and wounded sinner lost and left to die raise your head for love is passing by come to Jesus come to Jesus come to Jesus and live now your burdens lifted and carried far away and precious blood has washed away the stain so sing to jesus sing to jesus sing to jesus and live like a newborn baby don't be afraid to crawl remember when you walk sometimes you fall so fall on jesus fall on jesus fall on jesus and live sometimes the way deep and filled with pain so when your sky is dark and pours the rain cry to Jesus cry to Jesus cry to Jesus and live oh and when and music fills the night when you can't contain your joy inside then dance for Jesus dance for Jesus dance for Jesus and live with your final heartbeat kiss the world goodbye then go in peace and laugh on glory's side and fly to Jesus fly to Jesus fly to Jesus Jesus, fly to Jesus, fly to Jesus, and I didn't get a chance to talk with everyone, but Happy New Year to each one of you. I'm going to be in 1 John, the fifth chapter today, to bring to you what God has given me. I'm going to read verses 18 through 20 in a minute, but I want to look at a few verses just prior to that before we get to there, and it's in, uh, in the fifth chapter, that the first of the fifth chapter. Uh, but, but verse 20 before that is actually where I want to start. So 1 John 4, 20. The Bible says, If one, someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar, for he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? I get a little bit perturbed sometimes, John, was so blunt with us. I mean, there's some things I just wish... God hadn't gone so hard on, you know what I'm saying? Because there are some people out there that's not easy to love. 
But the fact is we can. The apostle John, who wrote his gospel and wrote these three epistles and wrote the book of Revelation, was probably the most loving of all the apostles. He was referred to as that one that Jesus loved that leaned on his breast at supper and asked him, who's going to betray you? Because Peter, when he was poking him to ask him, he didn't want to go ask him. And he was the most outspoken one of the whole bunch. What was going on there? He trusted John to do what he asked him to do. And this commandment we have from him, commandment I say, that he who loves God must love his brother also. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. There's salvation. That's how you get saved. And everyone who loves him who begot, that's God, also love him, loves him who is begotten of him, that's Jesus. You don't love God if you don't love Jesus. If you don't believe in Jesus, there's no way you can love in whatever and whoever you're calling God. Whew. Pointed? Wow. By this we know that we love the children of God, that's us, when we love God and keep His commandments. Now that's a little different what we might have thought when John was telling us up here blatantly, you love God, you've got to love people. But here's the way we do it. We keep God's commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep His commandments. Again, and His commandments are not burdensome. For what the world, or excuse me, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. There may be in our lifetime something we're having faith for that really never ever comes to fruition. All the heroes of the faith that we read about in the book of Hebrews didn't actually see come to fruition what they were having faith for. And that amazes me sometimes to just look at that and understand it. The one that believes in Jesus, excuse me, he who, uh, who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Now then it says, this is he who came by water and the blood, Jesus Christ, not only by water, but by the blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness because the Spirit is truth. And he lives in us, we know. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, the Holy Spirit, and these three, and there are three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, these three agree as one. Now I want to drop down to verse 14. Now this is the commandment we have from him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we ask of him. If anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask and he will give him life for those who commit sin not leading to death. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit leads to death. and There's no way out of that. This is what Jesus said. I do not say that we should pray about that, the, the sin that leads to death. All unrighteousness is sin. All unholiness, all things that are not godly is sin. And there is sin not leading to death. And he says we can pray for that for our brothers and our sisters in Christ. Now here's the focal scripture. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. S-I-N, but he who has, born, who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. We know that we are of God, and the whole world is under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. He adds on there, I didn't today, but he adds on there, little children speaking to the church, keep yourselves from idols. This song that was sung today could be a theme song for next year. The scripture that we read today could be our theme for next year, but it's kind of like when 
people say, what's your favorite verse, Brother Robert? And I'm true about it. Where I'm reading this generally <laughs> is my favorite verse because it's where God's got me focused in. But Philippians 4.19 is a great verse for mine. But if I can keep it on my mind to the end of this term, sermon, I'll tell you what God laid on my heart is my verse for the year. I like to do that and read it a lot during the year. And God just blesses that when we do that, or at least I believe he does. He does in, in my life. But these scriptures give us, starting into the new year, that which John says we can know. We can know. He's the only one that writes the way that he does. And as pointed as Paul was about a lot of things, John bears down on stuff that we have to understand and know and deal with as a Christian, as a son or a daughter of God. In these scriptures, when he's ending this epistle, he's spoken to them about many things in a short book, but he said, I want you to know. He called them, the church, he called those around his little children all the time. Because he knew that they were God's children and we'll never stop being the child of God. Thank God. And he called the people little children because he had such compassion for them and love for them like we do little children. How can you not love a little child? Before the Lord called me to preach, I got saved while I was working with a telephone company in Fayette, Alabama. And, and uh, before he called me to preach, I was working with them, and this sounds big shot, but it's nothing. I worked in the engineering department, and I had a high school degree, okay? All we did was trudge outside, go to different exchanges, and chain out line with a chain and draw it up on a sheet of paper and bring it in to an engineer who knew what he was doing. And he could take that Char uh, Carlton, and he could do something with it. But we did have a responsibility in knowing that. But I worked in all the little towns from here that way toward Fayette that way, just about all of them. Because when, and I'll not say the name of a telephone company, I don't have the privilege of doing that. I don't think it's in existence anymore. I think someone bought them out. But we, our exchange down in, in Fayette was just called by the name. And uh, this company bought them out, and they were a large, huge telephone concern. And when they bought them out, they began going into these 26 exchanges that they bought from this one family in Fayette and paid $26 million for. But they were in terrible shape. They had to be completely redone. The situation was you couldn't hardly get a private line inside the city limits. It was two or four party, and you paid dearly for a, for a single party line. And when you got past the city limits, forget it. It was all ten party lines. And the lines that you were talking about was two naked wires. They weren't covered in plastic the way they are now and wrapped with insulation on the inside four or five times. They were just open wires. And forget it if the wind was blowing. Wasn't going to happen. Just wait till it stops blowing, then use the telephone. But to get on a line that has ten parties on it is almost impossible. And my mother would get on the phone sometime and she would say, Excuse me, this is an emergency. I've got to use the phone. Could you just please let me on the phone? Click, 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 click. Sounded like to me everybody was listening to what was going on on that conversation. And I would do that, I would hear that. And I would never do anything like that. As a kid, I used to love to do that. I'd slip off. My mother would be in another room, and I'd pick up that phone, and I'd see what was going on. And, and in a minute, I didn't have... You're supposed to turn that receiver up like this so they can't hear you. <laughs> and in a minute, I didn't know to do that. You know, in a minute, somebody would say, who's on this line? <laughs> Wasn't me, baby. I hung it up. But we worked in those exchanges, engineering new lines, and we had to engineer every one of them out when that company bought that over. And some, some of the little towns, and I'm going to call their name, and, and I love little towns, don't get me wrong, my town was a little town that had 4,000 people in it, it still doesn't, in city limits. One of the biggest counties in Alabama has a good many people out there, but it's a small town, still is a small town. But we'd go into those towns and work, and when it came lunchtime, We'd go to work pretty early, 
And by the time it came lunchtime, we were ready to eat something somewhere and not buying a sausage and crackers out in some country store. We wanted something to eat. And usually someone would say, well, which of the two greasy spoons in this place do we want to eat at today? And we'd pick one out. And we would go. And I, we were walking up to one of those places one day, and two fellows were having a conversation out there. And I didn't know what they were having a conversation was as we were walking up. But by the t- when we got close enough to hear what was going on, this one guy, he'd just been doing this to the other one. You know, and I could see that going on. And when I got close enough to hear, to, to, to be, to hear what was going on, this second guy he'd been yakking at like that finally spoke up. And what I had heard him say at the end of that conversation, he said, and I'll guarantee you, and he stopped him right there. And he said, you sad sack, you can't guarantee anybody anything. And I thought to myself, that's probably true of a lot of us. And uh, I came from a kind of a braggadocious area of the country, and I heard that kind of thing all the time. When we greet one another, most of the time we'll say, how are you? Or how are you doing today? Well, down in my part of the country, a lot of times I'd hear something like this. They'd say, Robert, how are you doing? And before I could say anything, and they'll say, what do you know? I never didn't know what to I don't know how to answer that question. Or they'd say, what do you know good? Well, after I got saved, I could tell them, well, I'm saved and God's in his heaven and one day I'm going to meet him up there. And it was a pretty good witness. Sometimes you'd hear two of the brothers over here greeting each other. And they have a unique way of narrowing things down to the nitty-gritty. And I would hear them sometimes when they were greeting one another and, and one of them would say, what's it is, or what it is? And the other one would say, ain't nothing to it. I would always tickle me to hear something like that. But we can know things for sure. Aren't you glad that when you pick up the Word of God, what you know that God wrote by His His inspiration to just regular people on the face of this earth, that they penned the inerrant, infallible Word of the living God, which is true in every part, every jot, every tittle, every period, every question mark, every punctuation. Completely true. And what it says is what John emphasizes in his epistles. He emphasizes that God is light, God is love, and God is life. He says we can know that beyond a shadow of a doubt. He also says that we can know that the Holy Spirit indwells us and comforts us. And all of the ministries that God gave Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, when He came to the face of this earth. He came at Pentecost, like Jesus promised that He would. He leads us, and we follow. He guides us, and we go ahead. He directs us, and we go in those directions. And He intercedes for us, as Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And He is with us all the time. What a promise from the Word for all time, but a fresh and a new here in 2023. And He says, you can also know that not only is is God light and love and life, And not only can you know that the Holy Spirit is here and lives in you and that you have the Word from God, which is the Word and will never be added to nor taken away from, you can know that you have that and you can know that when you pray, God has given us prayer, 
that He hears what you say. He hears everything we say anyway. That's a kind of an awesome thing to think about. But when we're speaking to Him, He hears what we say. Have you ever gone into a store and boy, things are going well and you're getting checked out and a phone over there rings. And they turn and they pick up the phone and they start doing business there. And I'm standing there thinking, why didn't you finish up over here? Is that just me? I don't know if that's just me or not. I don't ever say anything about it. Not till today. But it happens. It's kind of disconcerting in a way. But when we talk to God, I don't care what's going on, God immediately got his eyes and his ears open. Yeah, what is it? He, had, he is hungry to hear us talk to him. He wants to hear us talk to him. He wants us to have that conversation on a continual basis throughout the day. When you've got somebody in the car with you, I know one in this auditorium that have only had one other person say that they greeted Jesus by saying, Hello, Jesus. I said, That's right. That's exactly right. Because he never leaves me when I'm sleeping, but when I rise up off of the bed in the mornings, if I could physically see him, he's standing right there looking at me. It'd be scary if it wasn't him, wouldn't it? But he's right there all the time. And when we get somebody in the car with us and we're going somewhere with them, we don't turn around and, and say, well, well, hello, Dan, how are you doing today? And have that conversation. No, we just... Carry on a conversation. It can stop for a while. And then we'll say, and, and two, you know about what we were talking about a while ago. Let me add that to it. And we'll just carry on that conversation. God wants that. I know He does. And He wants us to have that special place. And He wants it to be so special, and He wants it to a place that we go to so regularly, whatever time of the day it is. That if we don't go there, even if we're feeling bad and God, well, go lay down, pray on the bed. You don't have to go there that day. But if we just don't go there because we watched that crazy ball game till 1130 last night. I woke up every now and then. I, I said, Ann, what happened? And she'd have to tell me. But he's there and he won't he is there at that place of appointment where we go to sit and read our bible and have a pen and paper because he's going to say something to you either when you pray or out here he is going to say something to you now there are a lot of people in here that probably remembers everything god would say to them i can't so i've got my pencil and paper there and I just stop and take time to write it down, and he waits because he wants me to know it. And he didn't say it for me to forget it. He wants me to remember it because sometime or the other, and probably a lot of it's going to be that day, we're going to be glad that we had that conversation with him. And he lets us know what he's saying. And we are so used to going to that place after a while that we really feel, we don't feel right. You know, we just don't feel right. And sometimes I just say, Lord, I, I'm sorry I got up too late. Don't have to go to work anymore, though. And I have to scurry off to work. I'm sorry I got up too late and had to scurry off to work. I missed that time with you this morning, but forgive me of my sins and help me today because I know I'm going to need your help. And even in that instance, I have had people walk in that office over there that I had no idea that they had that kind of a situation and needed to say something and needed to have prayer. And God honored it. And God honored it not because I was short that morning in what I said and I wasn't there, but he honored it because, and like he does you, because you have been there so many times before. We can know 
The Holy Spirit is with us that we have the Bible and when we pray, God is there. In this 20, year 2023, we know everything we need to know for life on this earth as we read and pray and obey God. And, and here's the bottom line of it all. We know for sure that we're set free by the power of God through Jesus Christ, saved a new life in Him eternally for heaven. Boy, that was John's message. And He's there waiting on us. And as we think about, <clears throat> excuse me, the next couple of minutes, about three things. Let's just kind of let them ooze down into our spirit as we think about them. One of the things, in addition, that we can know for sure about, is about our salvation. 1 John 5, 18 says, We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. That's S-I-N. That's the sin that was passed on to us from Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And we're separated from God because of it. Well, why did God do it that way? God didn't do it that way. He, he put man and woman in a perfect place and said, you can have it all, just don't touch that tree. Just prove to me your love by not touching that tree. But they just did it. it seemed like they just had to do it. Satan tempted them and it looked so good and they wanted it so bad. And they knew that God was so good because they had already lived in this place and partaken of what He had given them. And surely God would look over that. But there's no way. And sin came into the world. And sin was passed on to each one of us. And a lot of people we deal with just can't get that. So that's the reason that I believe an integral part of our prayer for the day, especially if we're purposefully going to visit someone, is, Father, if you don't open this person's eyes, I can't. If he could get saved because of me, I'd saved him or her a long time ago. And it's not going to happen. And one thing, too, let me just say, of all of the things that we do in 2023, don't ever think... Or, or get hoodwinked, maybe even by the devil, into thinking that there's anything we can do. We can't do God's job for Him, and He doesn't want us to. He wants, <clears throat> he wants to do His job, but He wants to use us. And He's going to prick the conscience of people if we're willing to speak to them when we get the opportunity. They may not look like it. They may walk away and you never knew that God had touched them in any way. But so many times later on, you see them come down this aisle and they'll come to you, more likely or not, and say, it was you who said that that caused me to do this today. And that's going to be a glorious day. We know that whoever's born of God does not sin, S-I-N. We're saved eternally. Never to lose that salvation over anything. But we don't willfully go out and do what we want to just because we know we're born again. Because a child of God who loves God is going to submit to the things of God when God gives them His instruction. We know for sure that a person is eternally lost until they're saved. And when they're saved, they're, one, they're, they're saved forever. We know for sure in Christ, Holy Spirit is in us, eternally saved. God keeps us. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? He's gone to take care of me. I'm, I apologize for this. I've just been having this trouble. I started out clear and I thought I was going to be all right. Another thing we know for sure about the world we live in is that God's love never fails us. 1 John 5, 19 says, We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. We know for sure lost people are under the sway of Satan, lost to life, 
They're dead in sin before God, lost to God who created them and loves them above every other thing because they sent Jesus, He sent Jesus Christ to die for them. And that's the way we pray for people. Open their mind and let them understand and see this. Christians belong to God, but lost people are under the sway of Satan. Every lost person in this world is susceptible to Satan and what he says to them and what he wants to do in their life, and many do it. I heard a popular Christian singer who went the way of perversion many, many years ago saying in testimony after he sung a song on the internet, and I used to love to hear him sing, and I still love to hear him sing. I told you he's going to take care of me. Thank you. I still love to hear him sing, and I went ahead and listened to him. But he started saying in that witness, he said, I can't help the way I was. I was born the way I am. I just didn't tell anybody for years. And I don't believe that a God, a loving God, would keep me out of heaven because I'm this way because He made me. That's defying and resenting and going against everything that God said in His Word. Through His love, He tells us the truth about that, which all of that is untrue. And then He stands there with open arms and says, no matter what you've done, and He said this to people on death row, repent of sin, come into my heart and tell my son, ask my son to come into your heart and life, and I'll save you. Nobody is beyond getting saved. Nobody that we're praying for, not anybody. Keep that in mind. We can know that for six for 2023. Almost said 63. Must have been thinking about my 65 Chevrolet. I don't know. We can be for sure that we can do anything that God asks us to do. We can have the confidence, 1 John 5, 14, and 15, that God will do whatever we ask Him to do. Now, a lot of people have problems with it, but I invite your attention again to the Word of the living God that's inerrant and infallible. Listen to this. Now, this is the confidence, the beyond contradiction, of anything or anyone, that we have in Him, now this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, and we can know His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of Him. Brother Robert, I've been playing a, praying a long time, and I haven't gotten what I've asked for. Well, I'll refer you back to those heroes of faith in, in Hebrews. And I, 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 I can't understand, I can't, I, can't understand, I can't explain that except for to say that when we're in anticipation of something that we've asked God, we're acutely aware of Him all times, just like a hangnail. You pull that thing, and it'll get sore, and you'll bump it on everything that you come to. And man... It, you'll be reading the Word of God and, and, and He'll speak to you about that thing. And you'll be praying and He'll speak to you about that thing. And you'll learn things that you've never seen before because you're just so acutely aware of God because you're asking Him to do something in your life. And we have the confidence that He hears us. And if He hears us what we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we've asked of Him. Now, he knows the time schedule, and it may be the very minute you get off of your knees praying, but it may be years out here. I bet, well, I would think that everyone in this auditorium has had things happen in their life that they've been praying for for years. And then sometimes you pray for something and just bang, that day it happens. And, and, and what I have to say, thank you, Lord. It's grand when you do it this way. Do it that way all the time. <laughs> and we need to know that we can see our brother. If anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask, and he, God, will give him life for those who commit sins not leading to death. 
theft, robbery, a lot of things. There's a sin leading to death, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. I do not say that we should pray for that, but pray for the sins. All unrighteousness is sin, and there's a sin not leading to death. And we can pray for that. And our brother, and we know that God hears, and if he hears, we know that we have the petition we ask of him. We know we've got it. We've got it. We've got it. Believe it. I believe with all, all my life that God gave these things in the Bible so we could be set free. I, I know a lot of people who just not, they're not free. They haven't been set free. And they go around like this. Bless their heart. Everybody gets down. Everybody gets depressed. Everybody grieves. Everybody has to go through temptations. Everybody has to go through the incidents and incidental trials of this world because Satan is out there and he doesn't like you. And he's at war with you and he's using people around you. Go sit down in a restaurant and somebody will come sit in the next booth that's just cussing the blue streak to the guy or the girl that they're with. And what flabbergasts me anymore. I know back when I was a young girl, I wouldn't dare say any of those things. I don't think a thing about getting in there with them and doing it with them anymore if you hear them in public. But that's just the day in which we live. And Jesus is coming soon. He's coming. But we can be set free, not only through these things, but others that God tells us to do. Now, I'm, I'm happy. It, makes, it tickles me. I'm through, but I want to read you the verse God's given me for this year. It's a good one. I'm going to tell you, it's a good one. I didn't know it was going to be this one, but I came across it, and God kept convincing me about it, and I said, this is the one. Romans 8, 32. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him, meaning Jesus, also give us freely all things? When your children and your grandchildren more than your children, when they ask you to do something, you can't wait. I know I can't wait. I want to give it to them and see what their reaction is. And often it's not they just grab it and run off and go do something. With it. Oh, wait a minute, I did that. But that's just a child, and they'll learn. But they knew they could ask. And it pleased you to be able to grant what they had. It pleases the Father to do what we ask Him to do. I tell you, it pleases Him. So ask Him. Ask Him anything except that one exception in there that we read about. The Scripture says if we believe Him, he will do it unless it is harmful to us. And you wouldn't let your child take poison and drink it. And God won't let us take stuff and drink it if it's going to ruin our life. And not if we're letting him influence our life. Father, I pray this morning for the salvation of anyone that's lost today. And I know in my heart, and I, as I say this, if, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, what you do is believe on him. He was and He is and He always will be because He is God the Son. And He is our Redeemer. And He is the one who went through the trials of the beating and the cross that we might be saved. And He has flung it out there open to us. And here's what you do. Pray this prayer. Jesus, I do believe in you. And I want you to be my Lord and Savior. By the way, cleanse me of all of my sins right now. Clean me up. He'll do all of those things. If you need to come and join the church this morning, come and do it. Whatever God's impressing you to do, I, I know that when we have church Sunday after Sunday that He could be and will be and, 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 and has and will call people out to serve Him. Full time. We're all full time. Don't get me wrong, but full time in the ministry. Father, I pray that you'd have your way right now in this invitation time. In Jesus' name, amen.
You come right now. Would you stand? Let's stand together. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to Thank Brother Robert and Miss Ann for coming today, would you? Amen. <clears throat> Quickly, you should have received in the mail this week uh, a letter and a brochure concerning next weekend. Uh, and I want to reiterate that on Saturday, January the 7th at 3 p.m., in the dining room, there will be a fellowship time for the church for you to be able to meet the Smith family, talk with them, and uh, find out more about them. Don't bring your list of questions, please. Uh, give other people the opportunity to ask questions as well. Um, also, I need to announce that there will be a special called business meeting next Sunday morning, immediately after worship time. And the purpose of that special call business meeting will be so that the church can vote on the calling of Jeff Smith as senior pastor of Hillwood Baptist Church. It will be by secret ballot, so that's next Sunday morning immediately after our worship time. God is good, and all the time. Amen. Thanks for being here today. Again, Happy New Year. And uh, as we go today, you tell the people around you after we have prayer that God loves them and you love them too. Dale Thompson, you come lead us in our closing prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for bringing us back to your house to study your word and worship you. God, as we begin a new year, may we all renew ourselves spiritually and physically so we can spread the good news that those who repent of their sins and believe in you shall have eternal life. Lord, I pray for our nation. I pray that you reveal yourself to our leaders and that they make the decisions that are pleasing to you and not man. Lord, as we go out into the mission field, May we all see Jesus in each of us. In your holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen.